This robot snuck up beside me. Uh-oh. This is one of the primary sites where Amazon designs, tests, and builds its fleet of more than 750,000 robots. We wanted to have this visual of the engineers being able to look out the windows and say, I can see my product. I built it, I designed it here. I can go downstairs. I'm on with the test engineers. And they sound sort of like R2-D2. The decade-plus, multi-billion-dollar investment into robotics is key to Amazon's efficiency goals, especially as the delivery behemoth faces accusations about worker safety in its fulfillment centers. Before we start talking about productivity and efficiency, we start with safety. As we think about the opportunity within the fulfillment centers to innovate and improve, we tend to look at the most challenging tasks, lifting, manipulating, moving things. So will Amazon's big robotics bet pay off? As humans work side by side with robots, what will this mean for Amazon's workers and the future of its shipping business? We are about an hour outside of Boston at Amazon's robotics hub. This is a relatively new facility they bought a few years ago. We're here to look at Amazon's unique approach to robotics, which is to have the entire life cycle of the project and of the products under one roof, from development to testing to manufacturing. So Joe, we're about an hour outside of Boston. What's yeah. the history of this facility? We opened this facility about three years ago, and, and you can see on this road, there's a, a number of Amazon facilities. Our mother site was, was the original site, which is Boss 12 up in North Reading, and we'd grown quite a bit, and we wanted to open another development site. And so we landed in Westboro, Massachusetts. The talent in Erie is rich from previous you know, generations of technology that had been up and down the corridor here. We built this about three years ago. You know, when we opened it, we were a little worried, you know, would they come? And they have, and they have come, which is pretty exciting. Amazon has two robotic sites in the greater Boston area. The North Reading location was part of the acquisition of Kiva in 2012, which then became Amazon Robotics. What's unique about this space is how many roles it houses under one roof, from designers to scientists to testing engineers. Can I drive one? Yeah, absolutely. It's the result of a decision to not outsource and maintain control of the supply chain. They seem to be communicating their own little language. This one's got a bin. This one I'm controlling. This one has a mind of its own. I don't really know what it's doing, but it's chirping a lot, so it seems to be happy. I pursue this strategy of vertical integration, of building every aspect of the supply chain and manufacturing the robots. Well, one, speed, right? The thing is having end-to-end -end control, full vertical, as we think, gives us speed. And every time you start decoupling things, you're gonna lose that speed. And then you're also gonna lose the insight that the other processes have, or the other functions have. By having it all together, that feedback loop is super tight. And the second thing is innovation, right? We get lots of great insight from those other teams. So the teams that are building the manufacturing team have a large voice into the design cycle and it influence our design, impact our design. The folks that are deploying it also here have a large voice into the impact. This is where a lot of the software development is done for these products. And you can start with an idea on a whiteboard Nine months later, you can see it all of a sudden being in a prototype in the test lab. 18 months later, you see your product rolling off the line. That is like super empowering. When new candidates come in and think, what's the Amazon special sauce in robotics? This is it. Amazon is number seven on this year's most innovative companies list, and its robotics program is helping lead the charge on innovation. Multiple robots are developed or tested here in Westboro fulfilling different roles from lifting to sorting to getting out of the way of humans. We're gonna see our favorite robot. Proteus, yeah. When we started that, there was a team of six. And often, where innovation gets stifled is when you overstaff a program too early. And sometimes, the best path to success is to keep it super small with highly talented people who can move at a pace that a larger team will slow us down. Is the main thing that you're working on these arms and testing out the Proteus? So Proteus is my specialty. These okay. are very complicated systems. And are you working on the engineering side as well, or is it more on the testing once it's actually out here in production? So my particular job is with testing. We'd rather find problems here, get them fixed, and then push the fixed versions with the improvements and updates out to production in order to make the system even better. What's it like working alongside robots? Oh, it's great. I really enjoy this. I've been doing this for quite a while, so I've really Really taking a liking to the robots, both the arms, the drive units, the combination of the two of them working together. Ah, it's really fun. Robotics are going to fundamentally change what their jobs are, right? What tasks right. they're doing every day. So how do you think about that? And that's super exciting too. It's creating new opportunities. I think we've all seen there's always this tension between how does this impact people? 
And I think we've always seen that automation and technology breakthroughs create opportunities and create new jobs. And I think it's hard to argue that Amazon has, has not been a great job creator in almost every domain, you know, you can think about. But automation is still inevitably going to come with concerns over worker replacement. And I know Amazon has invested a lot more than a billion dollars in this process of upskilling or, or teaching new skills to workers. Do you think upskilling is the solution to fears of replacement? There are two things. We continue to grow at a very high rate. And so the number of facilities, the number of jobs we're creating has been exciting to see. And then the second part is, yeah, the upskilling is creating new exciting jobs and opportunities for potentially a, a group of people that wouldn't have that opportunity. And so I think in both dimensions, we're gonna see growth. And it's not just upskilling that's front of mind. A Senate committee report released in December reported conditions in Amazon warehouses were unsafe and prioritized speed over safety. How much does safety play a role in your thinking about how robotics are gonna play into Amazon's process? It's front and center. Before we start talking about productivity and efficiency, we start with safety. As we think about the opportunity within the fulfillment centers to innovate and improve, we tend to look at the most challenging tasks, lifting, manipulating, moving things. We're excited about what we've done, and we have a new facility with some of our newer generation technology that is 10x the automation of our previous generation. Amazon is known for its relentless pursuit of efficiency and productivity. Of course, they're always trying to get packages to customers faster and faster. Robotics is really key to making that happen. At the same time, safety is a huge concern for Amazon. Joe talked about how a lot of worker functions, and especially the worker functions like repetitive movements that often lead to injuries, are being replaced by robots. And I think Amazon acknowledges this, and they put a lot of investment into upskilling, or this process of basically teaching workers new skills and being able to give them new jobs. I mean, whether that's successful, I think, remains to be seen, and you will still have fears of what replacement looks like for workers. But you can see that robotics really will be the future in trying to replace a lot of the different areas that we do associate with workplace injuries and risk. I asked Joe whether he did see a future in which the warehouses or the fulfillment centers would be fully automated. And I think Amazon hasn't even fully thought that through, but I think even for a company as innovative as Amazon, it's still unclear what this might look like 10 years down the road. The great thing about Amazon, it so operates in many ways like a startup, has a startup mentality of speed. You're able to innovate at a speed and you don't get bogged down with bureaucracy, although sometimes a big company. I mean, there've been challenging times when I was sure this thing was going to work in some way and it didn't and the disappointment of your idea just didn't pan out. But to see the impact when you go globally, our products have made to our associates, that flywheel of driving customer selection, lower prices and speed, I get to see it real time. And so that's been pretty, it's, it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity.